In this project, we're going to deploy the lightweight Linux desktop environment MATE on Azure. On top of MATE, we're going to deploy XRDP, which allows access to the desktop environment from a remote desktop client. There are several ways this project can be used. One common scenario is deploying it as a shared development environment for a small team. The desktop image we build includes all prerequisites required to clone and build any project on our channel for all cloud providers. The only thing you need to add are your access credentials. Another popular use case is running a lightweight Linux desktop as a jump box into your cloud environment. It's a cheaper alternative to using a Windows-based jump box. We'll begin by provisioning the mini AD instance. This provides centralized authentication for our desktop users. As a part of the AD setup, several sample users are created. Their credentials are stored securely in an Azure Key Vault. Next, we'll use Packer to build a reusable Ubuntu image that has the desktop environment installed. We'll then take that image built from Packer and deploy a VM instance to test the desktop. Once the VM is initialized, you'll open a remote desktop client to the desktop server. At this point, you can pull out credentials from the Azure Key Vault to start testing the desktop environment. Here, I'm going to log in as Raj Patel. Now let's cover the prerequisites for these Azure desktop builds. First off, there's a video out there called Azure and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link at the top to that. That walks you through how to create the build identity in the Azure console, and then extract out the four environment variables that you need to set for Terraform Packer in the AZ CLI to work. So what you need is you need that Azure account with that build identity set. You need to have the AZ CLI, you need to have Terraform installed, you need to have Packer installed. Now we are ready to build the code. So the first thing you want to do is go to the GitHub documentation, navigate to the download this repository section, and copy the git clone command. We'll then paste that git clone command into our development environment. This will download the code from GitHub and put you in the right directory. At this point, you can run our check env script to make sure that all the prerequisites are met. It's, it detects that you have the AZ CLI installed, the Terraform CLI installed, JQ installed, Packer installed. It also makes sure you have all the environment variables set necessarily to make a connection to Azure. And then it actually logs into Azure to make sure you should have the correct credentials. Now we're ready to run the apply. The apply takes between 30 and 60 minutes to build. Most of that time is in taking the image from Packer. As always, if you have any questions about this video, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section and I will respond. The build has completed, so now let's go into the Azure console and take a look at what got built. This project creates three resource groups. The first one is the mini AD resource group. Next is the networking resource group. And finally, the main event, which is the Mate project resource group. The mini AD resource group is created by the mini AD Terraform module. You can use this module in your own projects. I'll put a link at the top to that. Mini AD deploys a Samba 4 domain controller and some sample user accounts. Mini AD can run on very cheap instances and provisions very quickly. It is ideal for demos and prototypes. In the network resource group, we deploy all the networking elements. This includes a virtual network, subnets, and network security groups. We also include a bastion host for debugging. Finally, this resource group contains an Azure Key Vault that stores the randomized credentials for our sample desktop users. The project resource group is the main event. It contains an NFS shared storage built on top of an Azure storage account. We use a shared storage for home directories and the slash NFS shared file space. We also deploy the Windows admin instance, which we will use to manage users. The main event is the Mate image built with Packer. A VM instance is then deployed with that image. Once deployed, the sample desktop users can be used to log into this environment immediately after the build completes. For the demo, the first thing you want to do is go to your development environment and run the validate script. From here, you want to copy the fully qualified domain name of the Mate instance. Next, bring up a remote desktop client and paste in the fully qualified domain name of the Mate instance. In the login dialog, we're going to log in as Raj Patel. So we'll go back to the key vault and we're going to grab Raj Patel's credentials. Now, the thing about this that's a little irritating is this password here, you have to type manually. You can't copy and paste into the XRDP dialog for security reasons. Once you're in the environment, we can copy and paste that, but that the login dialog does not allow you to paste. So I put in the password here for Raj Patel and now I'm going to log in. Okay, 
I'm in the desktop environment, so we'll take a quick tour of the applications that have, we've installed in the image. So the first one is Firefox. Next is Chrome. We also have this application called Only Office. It allows you to read Word files, Excel files, PowerPoints, and PDFs in this environment. Then we have Postman. Postman, of course, is good for debugging REST endpoints and microservices. Next, we have Visual Studio Code. Now, the idea behind this image that we've built is that we've installed all the prerequisites necessary for you to build anything on our channel. So in this environment, we've installed Packer, Terraform, Docker, AZ, AWS, and G Cloud. So all you need to do to start using this environment to build anything on our, on our channel is to provide credentials. Now, I've put credentials in here. And so if I go and I um, go into, this is, I'm in the Azure setup. If I do check ENV, it's going to go through and check all the requirements, which should be met because we built in the image. But just as importantly, it's going to make sure that you have the environment variable set necessary to actually log into Azure. Similarly, if you go into um, the ADEP setup, same deal. It's going to go through, make sure you have everything installed for the setup, and then it's going to connect, see, make sure you can connect to AWS. Finally, we install KRDC. This is a remote desktop client for the Mate environment. This allows us to use this desktop as a jump box into our cloud environment. Here we have connected into our Windows AD admin server. Now let's walk through creating a new user for the desktop environment. The first thing you want to do is get into the desktop environment and you're going to, we're going to use this as a jump box. The next step is we're going to go back to the development environment and run validate and validate is going to give you either the fully qualified domain of the windows instance or the IP address. So this you take the, uh, domain name here. Let's go back to the desktop environment and let's go to applications, internet, KRDC. We're going to use this environment, like I said, as a jump box. So we want to go in here, we do RDP. That is the, the AD admin box from the validate script. Click on that. And what we want to do is hit OK. And we're going to do R Patel. And we need to go back and get those credentials from Credentials Manager again. So I hit OK. Password from Credentials Manager. Okay, so this is the Windows AD admin box. And so what we want to do is I'm going to go to full screen here. And I am going to say, um, first off, we're on the Windows side. And so the first thing you'll notice is there is a Z drive. The Z drive maps the shared file system. What you can do on that is go in there and then go into the project directory and go to utils. And remember, when you add a new Linux user on the Windows side, you have to specify GID number, UID number, and UID. So we need to calculate what the next UUID is. So I'm going to go get next UID. It's going to come back and say your next UID number for your next user you're going to add is 10,005. And I'm going to bring up administrative tools. Then I'm going to do active directory users and groups. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do view advanced features. So I'm going to go and expand my domain and I'm going to go to the users folder and I'm going to say new user. I'm going to call the user Mike cloud. I'm going to give it a user login of M cloud Hit next. You need to specify a password. I'm going to say don't expire. Hit next, and it's going to finish. So now we need to go to uh, my cloud, and we have a couple of things we need to set in here. The first thing is we go to attribute editor, and this is where you set the UID number, GID number, and UID. So I'm going to go to the GID number, and we're going to test set that to 10,001. That is the M Cloud users group. Hit OK. Then we're going to go back down to UID. In UID, I need to set the user ID of the Linux side. So I'm going to do mcloud, hit add. And then we need to specify UID number. And that's the one that we calculated to begin with. It's 
and five. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna hit okay. So now we've we've set the required attributes. Now we need to give some group membership. So I'm gonna go back to properties here and I'm gonna say uh, member of, I'm gonna say add and mcloud users. And let's just call this person in US. And then I'm also gonna add and say Linux admins. And this user will also be able to sudo on the desktop environment. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now a quick thing you can test out here is you can go into um, here and say get next UID, hit run. And it's gonna say 10,006 because 10,005 is now owned by the mCloud user. So at this point, we're ready to actually log into the desktop. So you bring up your remote desktop client. I'm gonna hit connect. So we get the XRDB dialog. So I'm gonna do mCloud and I'm gonna set the credential, or use the credentials I set when I added the user. And there you go, you've logged in as mCloud. If I bring up a shell, I can say ID and it's gonna show you mCloud. You got the GID number, which is mCloud users. Then you have the different groups that I assigned. Since I did Linux admins, I should be able to do sudo bash. And I am now root. So that's the steps for adding a new user into your desktop environment. At this point, after you've uh, played with the desktop environment, it's now time to be a good stewards of your cloud accounts. And what you wanna do is destroy your project. So you wanna run the destroy. The destroy takes about 10 minutes for all the desktops.